I, 29M, have always supported my girlfriend, 23F. We have been together for four years now and live together for one. She has always had anxiety, as well as depression where some months are worse than others. I have supported her through all of this and understand it is very hard for her. In January she lost her job due to the current world circumstances. By March, she hit a low point with not eating as much, crying, and irritability, typical traits of depression. I have comforted her as much as possible and taken care of everything. However, at the beginning of June I was allowed back to work and since the house has fallen to shambles. I am too tired by the time I come home to do anything, even cook. Most nights we order takeout and on the rare occasion, she makes food. The floors aren't being washed, hoovering isn't being done, laundry is a mountain, and dishes are everywhere. I try to keep on top of it, but with work, it is almost impossible. She is home all day. She lies in bed till late afternoon, watches Netflix, eats bowls of cereal, and naps. That's about it. I've tried to gently coax her to do more, and she says she will get to it but never does. I finally snapped and told her I was sick of her doing nothing all day and leaving the housework to me. What if she is here and I am working, she needs to be pulling her weight. She got upset and said that she wants to, but she can never find the motivation. That she is tired all the time. I said I understood she was depressed, but it isn't an excuse to do nothing and be lazy. No one likes housework, but I won't take any more excuses about it. She needs to start doing it or leave. The next day I come home to a clean house and a note from her saying she was sorry and is going to stay with her mother, her mom helped her clean before they left. I tried calling, but she wouldn't pick up. When I rang the house, her mother answered and had a lot to say. She was furious. Telling me about how she is struggling and I am making her worse. That I should be supporting her not ignoring that she is in a bad place. And so on. I was told my GF had been crying all day in her bedroom, and I feel awful. I never wanted to hurt her, I just snapped. I tried to get her mother to give my GF the phone, but she wouldn't speak to me. It feels like a lose-lose situation. On one hand, I know depression results in a lack of motivation and cleanliness. And on the other, I can't stand to see our home in such chaos. I've never had depression so I can't say for sure how bad it truly is. That's why I find it more difficult to 100% empathize am I the idiot for telling her depression isn't an excuse. P.S. She has a therapist and talks regularly with them. Her depression is worse since losing her job. Usually, she is quite clean and tidy. We don't usually have this issue. She is looking for a job despite her depression etc. I have enough money to support us both in the meantime. No idiots here. I feel for both you and her. It's not easy dealing with someone who has depression, just as it's not easy for that person to be dealing with depression. It's not fair on you to bear that emotionally, and it's not fair to her to have someone pushing her. I think you both need to reevaluate and probably take a break or just break up. She doesn't seem okay to be in a relationship right now with what she's dealing with. No idiots here. Depression is a gluttonous beast. When it drains the primary victim to a barely functioning husk of the person, it gets hungry and starts to feed off the energy of those close to the victim. To keep the supply going, it manipulates the victim into as you said, lose-lose-lose situations so it can stuff itself on sadness and distress. Practical advice. Apologize for snapping. It is unfair for you to carry the whole load indefinitely. But empathy and strategy will serve you better here than being right. You're the idiot. Depression isn't some wimpy thing that you can yell at someone to get over. Dealing with depression or caring for someone with depression is no easy task in the slightest, but if you care, these are the types of challenges you'll have to slowly work through over possibly multiple years. Update. Ultimately I realized that the majority of the blame was mine. I never ever should have called her lazy because that isn't what she is. I lashed out and I shouldn't have. She stayed with her mother for a few days, and we eventually met up to talk. I told her how it just got too much for me, but it was no excuse for lashing out, and I apologized. She apologized also, not that she needed to, and we talked for a long while about how we can make our relationship work. I expressed my concerns over her therapist who is very against anything other than talking therapy. She agreed that he didn't seem to really have her best interests at heart, and she is currently looking for someone new. For now, I suggested she stops looking for work. 
She got a lot of rejections, and I could see it was upsetting her more. I just felt we should take a step back from that, and I want her to focus a little more on herself. She was unsure as she felt bad that I would be working for both of us, but I assured her it is fine. I make enough to support us both quite comfortably. I also suggested maybe she could volunteer at some point just to get her out and get some more stuff on her resume. I'm no therapist so these were just suggestions, but it has seemed to have taken some of the pressure off her which is all I wanted. We agreed that being in the apartment all day alone and in bed is not good for her. So, we came up with a plan that she does an exercise video three times a week, it's only a 10 minute one, just so she is doing something. She has found she likes doing them, they make her feel a bit better after, and has started something called yin yoga now too. To help me, she has one chore a day to do. I don't care what it is. It could be dishes or it could just be putting the laundry in the hamper. This rule has at least gotten her out of bed for part of the day, and she's found that once she starts she sometimes ends up doing more than one thing. I make sure to show my appreciation for whatever she has done, no matter how small it was. We have set out that every Sunday we will have a deep cleaning day where we get everything done for the week. This has been surprisingly successful. We make it fun and just mess around while still getting things done. It makes the week a lot more manageable when we only have light chores to keep on top of. She is trying more, and I am also working on being more supportive of her depression. I'm researching it more and learning ways I can help her because it is a part of her. We are both putting more effort in and communicating a lot better. I hope we keep making progress because I do love her very much and want us to work. It's so nice when these things have a happy ending. Good job on working on your issues and communicating properly. Great to hear. Depression-induced inability to get out of bed is a vicious circle, and having you there to help her both be accountable, and also as her support is super important, it's good to see that you've been able to change your behavior, which in turn will help her as well. I'm glad that you've found this balance. I do think you are being hard on yourself as well. Are you familiar with the concept of caregiver fatigue? It sounds like you unknowingly assigned yourself as her caregiver which is incredibly taxing, especially when it just sort of happened as opposed to knowingly taking on the job. Living with someone with mental health issues has its own set of challenges. You should seriously look into getting your own therapist to help you handle that responsibility and manage your own well-being. I'm 30 and my 12-year-old sister is living with me right now because mom and pops are vulnerable, so it made more sense for me to care for my sis for the time being. She is a really great kid and to be honest, I feel in a lot of ways like she's my own kid because my mom and dad don't speak English, so I kind of had to raise my sis in ways that they couldn't. Hard to explain, but I'm sure anyone with a secondary culture will get what I mean my mom and dad are great parents, but having an English-speaking person to guide you through the crap when you live in an English-speaking country is invaluable in my opinion, and my sister trusts me with stuff she won't necessarily trust my parents with. Anyway, my girlfriend was facetiming me and my sister walked past in shorts and a t-shirt cause it was hot. My GF waited till my sister had left the area, but not a room, and made a face, and said maybe feed her less OP, her thighs are kinda chunky. I saw her Ed and told her to shut up, just came out of my mouth, and immediately ended the call. My sister is a bit chubby, but who says stuff like that about a 12-year-old girl? Literally. Everybody. I know. Has been texting me that I'm a pose boyfriend, and that how can I disrespect my GF like that? I am expecting an apology from her, but to my shock, everybody is expecting me to apologize. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. 12-year-old girls are incredibly vulnerable to body image issues. You're absolutely right to shut down such comments immediately. Not the idiot and this is a huge red flag. Why would you want to date someone that insulted your little sister like that? Not the idiot well done for standing up for your sister it's talk like that, that no young girl should ever be judged on. I just hope she's now your ex and that you never apologize. My, 28F, boyfriend, 27M, Ryan, likes to help others. He is the type of guy who would give a coworker money for their rent or buy groceries for our neighbor. However, he can take it too far at times. He often tries to help people without asking if they need or want his help. 
every year, my brother, 35M, Paul, and his wife, 33F, Lily, host a holiday dinner. This year Ryan attended for the first time. Before we left for their house, I told Ryan that Lily was legally blind and had been her entire life. She knew what she could and could not do. I told Ryan to only help Lily if she asked for help. We arrived early so I could help Paul and Lily cook. While we were cooking, Ryan kept telling Lily things, like. Lily, if you're looking for the salt, it's to your right or Lily, don't put that there, it's too close to the edge. Lily and Paul both told him that while his commentary was somewhat helpful, it was completely unnecessary. Still, Ryan did not stop. However, things became tense when Lily went to go chop vegetables. When she pulled out a knife, Ryan stopped her and asked if he could take over because he didn't want Lily to hurt herself. Lily said she'd be fine, but Ryan insisted she give him the knife. Finally, Paul got annoyed and told Ryan to stop. Ryan did stop, but he kept hovering over Lily while she was chopping. I asked Ryan to sit down until dinner was ready, but Ryan insisted that he just wanted to help. Finally, Lily asked him and me to help set the table and greet people arriving. We did, but things were still tense. I did pull Ryan to the side and reminded him again to only help Lily if she asked for it. He agreed, but I could tell that he was still upset. Everything finally boiled over after dinner. My nieces, 5 and 3, have a game they love to play with their mother. They will hand Lily something, and Lily would have to guess what it is. Lily would sometimes make a couple of clearly outrageous guesses, like seeing an egg as an elephant or a shoe, to make her daughters laugh. After dinner, the eldest handed Lily the salt shaker. When Lily guessed it was a phone, Ryan piped up and said it was a salt shaker. Lily laughed it off and explained the game to Ryan, but I could see she was annoyed. My niece then handed Lily a coin. When Lily guessed incorrectly, Ryan loudly told Lily it was a coin. This was apparently the last straw for Paul. Paul demanded that Ryan leave since he clearly couldn't respect Lily. Ryan insisted that he was trying to be helpful. However, Lily said it was probably best if Ryan and I left. I quickly gathered up our things and managed to convince Ryan to leave. Ryan is currently pissed at me. He said I should have defended him, especially since I knew he was only being helpful. He also insisted that I should have stood up against Paul's overreaction, Ryan's words. I'm now wondering if I should have defended Ryan. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Ryan didn't deserve to be defended there. I'm sorry, I'm sure you love Ryan, but good lord he sounds insufferable. He wasn't being nice. He was being patronizing. Lily neither wanted nor needed his help. He stuck his nose where it didn't belong, and he was asked to stop numerous times. I would have kicked him out too. Not the idiot. Ryan wasn't helpful at all. He was disrespectful and dismissive. You provided Ryan with information. He ignored it. Ryan is ableist. Ryan is an idiot. Your BF is condescending as hell. Not the idiot for not defending him, but maybe should have told him to stop himself more firmly. My, 34F, husband, 32M, has a medical condition, heart problems, and we sleep separately, he sleeps in the bedroom while I am on the couch. He's become partially reliant on me to care for him whether it is cleaning, cooking for him, supervising his medication intake, or managing side effects. He's on a number of medications, and one of them causes excessive urination, it is essential to treat the swelling of his feet and abdomen, as a result he urines a lot which is an issue cause he just keeps wetting the bed. Previously, he was catheterized so I didn't worry about the bed wetting issue, but he went against the doctor's recommendation and had the catheter taken out and the problem of him wetting the bed started. As a reasonable alternative to taking the catheter out, adult diapers had been recommended, but he was 100% against it. We had arguments about it cause it wasn't like he had an allergy preventing him from using diapers. He promised he'd be careful, but every time he'd end up wetting the bed and expecting me to clean it, clean everything the sheets, the mattress, the floor even. So far I've cleaned the bed over 40 plus times middle of the night, and he still says no whenever I urge him to just wear diapers. It all came to head nights ago, he woke me up shouting from the bedroom that he wet the bed again and needed me to get up and clean it right then, I'm talking 2am. I expected that and was maddened, so I ignored him and remained sleeping. He kept shouting demanding I come clean up then started calling my phone, but I turned it off. 
I got up at 6 and found him sleeping on the floor on a spare mattress, and the bed was a mess. He woke up and blew up at me calling me nasty and heartless for not rushing to help and clean up the bed for him after he wetted it. I stated that it was his fault for refusing to wear diapers after willingly removing the catheter. He yelled saying the catheter thing caused him suffering, then said he'd never wear diapers cause of his hurt ego and manhood, also said I had a job and I neglected it and acted petty by punishing him this way and causing him to sleep on the floor. I said I was done doing unnecessary chores in the middle of the night almost every night when he could use diapers, he was astonished by what I said and called me a monster for enjoying his suffering like that, then got Syl to come and give me a stern talk about my attitude towards her brother, cause her brother is helpless. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Adult diapers hurt his ego, but peeing all over the bed 40 times and waking his wife to clean it up doesn't girl, you're sleeping on the couch and cleaning up his pee. You're basically an unpaid night nurse. Make some clear boundaries to make life easier for yourself. Incontinence undergarments at night or he figures out how to clean them himself. Not the idiot. I'm also a spousal caregiver. Being a spousal caregiver is so hard. No, this isn't your fault. This is on him. He needs to wear the depends, period. If he won't use a catheter then that's his option. You dealing with late night bedwetting isn't sustainable. Especially while his entitled backside screams at you. It's soul crushing and I'm so sorry. If he has to be on that med, this is the consequence. Stick to your guns here. Not the idiot. You do everything for him and he doesn't even try to make it easy for you. The catheter was taken out against advice, he doesn't use adult diapers against advice. He is making it all hard for you. Let's hope he will learn from this and starts to use diapers or the catheter again.